postcards from Miguel. I wonder where he's writing from now. It's Michigan. I hope he brought some warm clothes. It can really snow there. Hello, Alicia. I'm having a great time. I've seen miles of forest, and we're going to visit the big cities. But first, we're exploring the lakes. Michigan is surrounded by them. I bet you never expected to see lighthouses here, but there are lots of them. No, I guess I didn't expect lighthouses. Michigan isn't anywhere near the ocean, is it? Oh, I forgot about Michigan is a state located in the Midwest region of the United States. It's a unique state because it is located on two peninsulas completely separated by water. A peninsula is an area of land that is almost entirely surrounded by water. Michigan's two peninsulas are called the Lower Peninsula and the Upper Peninsula. The Upper Peninsula is bordered by the state of Wisconsin to the west and by the country of Canada to the north. Lake Michigan lies to the south of the Upper Peninsula and Lake Superior is found to the north. The Lower Peninsula borders the states of Indiana and Ohio to the south. Lake Michigan is to the west, and Lake Huron, Lake Erie, and Canada border the Lower Peninsula to the east. The four lakes surrounding Michigan are part of the five lakes called the Great Lakes. They are the largest group of freshwater lakes in the world. The Great Lakes include Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, Lake Erie, and Lake Ontario. They were created when glaciers crept over this area more than 10,000 years ago. A glacier is a huge mass of ice that moves slowly across the land. The movement of the glaciers carved out five gigantic holes, and when the glaciers eventually melted, the holes filled up with water. Michigan's Lower Peninsula is sometimes called the Mitten because its shape resembles a hand inside a mitten. The Lower Peninsula is mostly made up of plains that are called the Great Lakes Plains. A plain is a large area of mostly flat land. The plains of the Lower Peninsula are rolling and covered with grass, with many forests and rivers. Located on the western half of the Upper Peninsula is an area called the Superior. upland. Though there are plains in the upper peninsula as well, the superior upland mostly consists of rolling hills and a few low mountain ranges. The upper peninsula's climate is colder and receives much more snow than the lower peninsula. Okay, I've already found one for my list of the biggest, tallest, and longest in the U.S. This bridge is the longest suspension bridge in the whole country. It's about five miles long, and it connects the two main parts of the state. Wow, that bridge does look amazing. The Mackinac Bridge carries cars and trucks traveling back and forth between Michigan's Lower Peninsula and Upper Peninsula. In some places, the bridge soars about 200 feet above the water. It was completed in 1957 and is made out of concrete and steel. The bridge crosses the Straits of Mackinac, which connects Lake Huron and Lake Michigan, and separates the upper and lower peninsulas. A strait is a narrow passage that connects two larger bodies of water. Ships use the strait to travel from one lake to another. One common type of ship that carries heavy freight along the lakes is called a barge. A barge is a large flat bottom boat usually
gently pushed by a tugboat. Barges on the Great Lakes transport freight, such as stone, metal, and coal. It is one way that freight gets from city to city in Michigan, and to places around the world. How is this possible, since these lakes are so far inland? Ships from Michigan can reach the Atlantic Ocean by using the St. Lawrence Seaway. The Seaway links the Atlantic Ocean to the Great Lakes. So ships arriving in Michigan ports deliver goods and products from many other areas. A port is a trading center where ships can load and unload goods. People get on and off ships at ports too. And before the Mackinac Bridge was built, if Michiganians, or as some people say, Michiganders, wanted to go from one part of their state to the other, they could take a ferry from the port at St. Ignace to Mackinac City. Ferries still take people to the many islands in Michigan, such as Beaver Island and the Manitou Islands. An island is a body of land that is completely surrounded by water. Many of the islands are parks that people enjoy on vacation, canoeing, hiking, and camping. One famous island is near the Mackinac Bridge in Lake Huron. Mackinac Island has been a popular vacation spot since before the American Civil War. No cars are allowed on Mackinac Island, which is a series of rock terraces rising out of the lake. The Upper Peninsula is also a popular vacation destination. Many people living on the Lower Peninsula make the trip across the Mackinac Bridge to enjoy the forests and shoreline of the Upper Peninsula. Hey, Alicia, would you look at this? It's a Model T car. <laughs> a man named Henry Ford set up a factory in Highland Park and produced these cars. I learned all about it at the Henry Ford Museum. Southeastern Michigan is the center of the car industry in the United States. An industry is a group of businesses that provide a type of service or make a certain kind of product. Why did the car industry develop in Michigan? When settlers first came to the area, they began clearing the forests. The trees that they cut down were used to make carriages. Companies in places like Lansing, Pontiac, Flint, and Detroit were manufacturing centers for carriages that were pulled by horses, the main way of getting around in the days before the automobile. In the 1840s, companies began mining iron ore from Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Ore is stone that contains metal, and iron ore is used to make steel. With iron ore nearby, the steel industry in the middle of the United States began thriving. One of the cities that began manufacturing steel was Detroit. The carriage industry turned into the automobile industry, and readily available local steel sped up its growth. Henry Ford is one of the industry leaders who figured out how to quickly make cars that most Americans could afford to buy. Mass production helped the automobile industry grow quickly. The port at Detroit is another reason that the auto industry grew in Michigan. Both lumber and steel were shipped into and out of its port. Ships from Detroit's port travel to either Lake Huron via the St. Clair River or to Lake Erie via the Detroit River. So many automobiles have been made in the Detroit area over the years that it's known as the Motor City. The automotive industry is a major part of the economy for both Michigan and the United States. The economy is a system of how people earn, spend, or save money. People work in all parts of the automobile industry, from dreaming up new kinds of cars to make, to building them, to selling them. In Grand Rapids and Lansing, there are parts manufacturers that make things like wheels or windshields.
want to know is how a new car gets made. Who gets to come up with the idea to make a really cool car? My name is Liz Wetzel. I am Director of Design for Small Car Interiors at General Motors. Working on interiors is what I do, but that's just one piece of the whole process of designing and building an automobile. The first part of the process is the designers start to develop sketches both for the exterior design and the interior design. Some of our designers today use pencil, paper, markers, but a lot of designers are starting to use computers for their sketching. We have what we call a virtual reality room here where we can project their sketches full size onto these screens and take a look at what the vehicle might look like standing there full size. We have a team of sculptors, designers, and engineers who work on this three-dimensional model at this point in time. There's the digital sculptor, and there's the hands-on clay sculptor. The digital sculptor will start to build these surfaces. This in the computer. The hands-on sculptor can take a sketch and turn it into a three-dimensional model. The scale models are built out of a large piece of foam, and then we cover the foam with clay. Once that's complete, then we put a skin on the clay. It looks like paint. On the interior design, we start again with sketches, just like we did on the exterior. We'll put a clay model together and we'll actually paint it and put all the parts and pieces in there, the radios, the climate controls, the instrumentation for driving, all your buttons for windows. We'll put all that stuff in there so at the end it looks like a finished interior design for a car or truck. Once the design is complete, it then begins to be built in an actual manufacturing facility, which we call a plant, where there are teams of skilled trades people who put the car together. The vehicle is moving down the line and it's, as it's moving, people walk up to it and they assemble their part onto the vehicle. Safety is a big priority in the manufacturing process because a lot of the people in the manufacturing plants work around a lot of heavy equipment when it's complete, it rolls off the assembly line. It then goes to our dealerships where it's on the lot for customers to come and purchase the vehicle. And that's the most fulfilling part when you see the vehicles that you worked on on the road with satisfied customers. Before Michigan became an industrial state, the area was covered with forests. Several Native American groups, such as the Chippewa and the Ottawa, hunted in the forests and fished on the lakes long before European settlers arrived. The French were the first Europeans to build settlements here. Sault Ste. Marie, located on the Upper Peninsula, where Lake Huron connects with Lake Superior, was their first settlement in Michigan. In addition to the French, the British also wanted control of this region with its source of valuable fur pelts. They fought the French over this region during the French and Indian War. It was called that because many Native Americans fought on the side of the French against the British. Ultimately, the British took control of the area. But later, the land became a U.S. territory after the American Revolutionary War. There were very few settlers in this region until the Erie Canal opened in New York State in 1825. The Erie Canal connected cities in the eastern part of the U.S. with the Great Lakes. Once the canal was open, many new people came to settle on the land that would become the 26th state. Alicia, you'll never guess what first I'm putting on my list. 